Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Gentlemen, welcome. This is going to be a long video because we've got a lot of work that we need to do to this box. Um, there's some pretty heavy history that goes along with this amplifier. Um, a lot of it which I'm not going to get into. I am uh, just going to take the customer's word for it and I'm going to move forward. But uh, I will say this, this thing was uh, ordered new. Uh, came in damaged and was not what was ordered. And uh, I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm not in the business of uh, being negative or saying anything negative about anyone or any other business. And it's my job just to fix the box. So we're going to do just that. We're just going to fix it and we're not going to spend any time walling on the details. We're just going to identify some of the problems that are with this particular box and we're going to move forward. This is an X-Force 2x8. And uh, we're going to go in here and make it the way the customer wants. We're going to have to add bias to it because there was no bias in this box. And we're going we're gonna to do some things. And we're going to talk about some obvious problems. So on that note, I want you all to sit back, relax, get a bowl of popcorn because we're going to be here for a minute. All right, let's pop the tin off and take a look at the inside. Okay, so let's start from here. Um, as we all know that this product and this product line has gone through many changes um, over, its over its history, um, for a good 15 plus years it stayed exactly the same. And then we started having changes to the design, um, some for the better, some for the worse. Um, we have been uh, hired by the customer here to go in and modify this thing to be the best of the best of the best. He uh, had a lot of problems with this thing when he first took it out of the box. and First and foremost, it came in quite damaged from um, the original person he purchased it from. The bottom left-hand corner down here is dented, the back left-hand corner is dented, and the back right-hand corner is dented, or the front right-hand corner, left-hand corner is dented. So we're going to have to take most of this thing apart and see if we can get the case banged out straight. The lid is also dented over here in the bottom corner down there. Um, I want to take a minute, let's talk about the fans. So. This is a relatively new build amplifier, but there are some issues. Um, the gentleman ordered this thing and he is telling me that it is not what he ordered and it isn't an older style cabinet and he ordered it with, well, it's supposed to be the newer style cabinet. I'm here to tell you, bud, that that's actually a grace and a plus. Uh, the newer style cabinets have airflow issues. The new waffle grid pattern that they have on the lids, like, I'm move some stuff here. Here's another new one, but this is the new cabinet style. Got quite a few amplifiers in stock from these guys. Here's a new cabinet style. Um, the problem that is going on is that this, this uh, architecture here is quite limiting to the airflow and uh, the vents that are on the cabinet down here, there's too much metal surface area so it restricts air going in, restricts air going out. This is the one that has an option to have a third fan added, there's actually a vanilla cover board behind it. This is, a, this is another video, we're going to come back to that and I've got at least two dozen like this that I've got to work on now that are here at the moment. But the uh, the older cabinet style fans, or the older cabinets is a plus to you, bud. I want to tell you why. There's You just can move so tremendously more air. Tremendous. Now, because that back corner over there is dented in, over here, 
there's a piece of phenolic that runs along the length of the back of the cabinet and uh, it's bowed out so there's slots there's a slot here and a slot here and a slot here that are open and this one's to exhaust the heat out of the off the off the main unit the center one usually is blocked and if it's the old style switching transformer supplies which the ones that you needed a forklift to pick up but they ran awesome I normally take a piece of fiberboard and I'll put in here and I'll split separate so this airflow on this side of the cabinet is isolated from that airflow so the air going in to cool the transformers is separate than the air that gets intermixed and cools the actual amplification board now <clears throat> all that aside you've got you have the opportunity for better ventilation and better cooling so I say that but then I want us to stop and look at something else here. Let's go down here and look at something else. Now, if you'll notice, right about here, the copper board starts to change color and it gets a different sheen to it. And right about here, the copper board changes and gets a different sheen to it. Um, this is where most of the crux of our problems are coming from. If you can see, the sheen comes out to about here let's go in here and look now this is the new board design that they uh, they've decided to go with over there now this is a couple month old month old amplifier there's two things that are taking place um, this etched board design is great for ease of construction and that's exactly where the the benefits to it end the amount of current flow that can go down these traces is incredibly limited now we've seen this board design before we're gonna go to go to the 80s man 80s and early 90s we're gonna get our big hair out and we're gonna put on our ripped jeans and we're gonna go to the same style of board but we're gonna go to a different builder this is a this is a skull cracker cabinet as you can clearly see I line these two up that the end path on both sides of this this cabinet versus the one that we're looking at here and here are vastly vastly bigger traces the other thing that you have to take into consideration with this kind of thing is the thickness of the copper that's 200 thousandths thick copper it's really thick it's heavy duty thick copper copper sheet on clad board okay well this is a lot thinner copper on a very thinner substrate. So we see this heating issue and this, this draws our attention to another underlying problem is if we have six fans and we have the ability to move such a vast amount of air through the cabinet, why is this getting so hot? Being that it is so new, right? So that popped up immediately. I looked at this and I went, oh wow, it's getting so hot because the transistors are starving for current because the traces are so small. And if you can see right down in here in between each one of these primary strips, I mean the smallest strip is the one that goes in between the transformer leads. It's freaking teeny. The transistors are starving. We've seen this before with Texas Star and Palomar boards um, that are also etched and cut. And the reason they're doing that is because they're cheaper and it's the ease of construction. That's not what's causing this problem. Uh, so I sat here and I thought, and I'm like, wait a minute. Why is, it, why is the heat so localized, right? Uh, well, we'll take a look at it. So we know for a fact, because the guy's been running this thing, he said the power dropped out on it, but we don't have any burnt resistors, we don't have any burnt transistors. I bet you anything that one of these trans, one of these capacitors up here has gotten hot and has fallen completely out of capacitance, started to break down from temperature. Um, we're gonna replace those with metal mylars, that'll help. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to pull all these PPs out, and a guy like he, like I said, he contracted us to do the best of the best. So we're going to put Toshibas in this thing. But before we can do the Toshibas, we got to make sure everything's up to snuff around the Toshibas. Like these output capacitors have to be changed to the right KV rating. So a lot of guys think as I look at the, the capacitor and they'll look at the KV rating on the capacitor, like these that come from Alibaba out of China. And, and there's good parts and there's bad parts that come from China. I'm just going to say that. So they look at the rating and they go oh kv so therefore it's good now the kilovolts is only the voltage it doesn't have anything to do with the amperage nor has it anything to do with frequency 
So each capacitor has its own rating that is tested at a given frequency. Okay, and that rating, as you go higher in frequency, the amperage, as you go higher in frequency, the amperage has a tendency to fall off. Okay, well eventually the amperage falls off and then the voltage rating falls way off. So you'll find that most caps, at least big ones, um, like doorknobs and so forth, usually they're tested somewhere in the area of uh, 1.2 megahertz to 3 megahertz. Sometimes you can get where they're tested up to 30 megahertz, but it's very rare, not a common production thing. So hence the reason we gotta go with a higher voltage rating. So we might be only moving 500 volts by it, but that 500 volt rating, that half kV rating, after three megahertz drops off to nothing, okay? So just because we have a high kVA rating on the capacitor doesn't necessarily mean that it is qualified to be in this set position. So uh, you have to look at the full end of the data sheet, not just what the voltage rating is, but what frequency did they test that at and what frequency is that component um, recommended for use. So I have to keep that in mind. And that's the problem that we're having with a lot of these blue caps is that they're breaking down underneath temperature. There's guys that have had no problems and that's because they went through and they bought a different value capacitor It's blue. Just because the blue, it just because it's blue doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but the ones that have been chosen here, not the best. It's okay, we're gonna go and put other things in there. Like, we're gonna use caps like this. Now the little blue cap that's in there is one of these jobbers right here. So this is a 6 kVA rated part. Okay, 6 kVA, we can all see that. This is a 3 kVA component. The difference is, is that when we pull the data sheet on this, this KVA, this part, the KVA rating is a much higher frequency, where this one here is only 1 megahertz. This one here is 15 megahertz. So there's not as much pressure on this, but then again, if you look at the differential in, in size, it becomes pretty obvious why these are holding up and we're having problems with these failing. So. Gotta look at the data sheet. Gotta look at the data sheet. So, let's change angles here. Let's we'll start working towards the back of the cabinet. If we look, if we look at our saturation point of heat on the board, it runs and it's only about yay big. So, it's about this wide. The whole width, all the heat saturation that has taken place, and what we're talking about is the discolorization in the copper. Now, this is not the newest style board. Now, the latest thing is that they've got another secondary cut edged surface to where they can solder the back of the transformers down to the board, too, thusly creating even a shorter amount, well, a longer distance, less copper, um, decreasing the amount of area the ground is gonna be able to be present to feed the transistors, okay? So we've got our grounds tied down over here on this side of the board, and we're using the copper to carry all the current. Now, if he was to take all the, the grounds and run them to the cabinet, and then use the heat sink, and then punch a couple holes in here, um, so that the heat sink was carrying most of the current and carrying the current to the board, we could probably be able to overcome some of these issues, but really comes down to board construction. So we're seeing that our heat saturation in the cabinet is this amount of space. It terminates here, terminates here, runs to here, and is only this wide. Now a clue would be that our screw for the heat sink here, and there's a screw for the heat sink here, and not all the way out here. That's a clue. Let me reset the camera again. Okay, let's start over here. This is the back right corner of the cabinet. As you guys can clearly see, this is all done and in. This is all wibble wobbled. So I'll probably end up cutting these out because once the aluminum gets stretched like this, we can't get it to go back. So I'll probably cut these out, cut here, and cut over here and sand this down so it's nice and smooth. I went ahead and I pulled the phenolic board out, which is this piece here 
here. I went and pulled this out because it was it was hanging and it was it was allowing too much air to come out and we had to address it anyhow. In the process of uh, putting the hemostats in here to remove this screw or the screw and this this screw and this nut over here, we made ourselves a little observation. So the phenolic sits like this. I was down there and I'm looking, I'm down there and I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm weaseling the, the hemostats in there to, uh, to pull the nut off the back of the screw. My eyes kind of drifted over and we looked in here. Now you guys are going to ask yourself, BBI, what are we looking at? Well, I got out a couple different stocks of cabinet heat, or heat sink here. And I wanted to give you guys a comparison. This is a standard width of heat sink, six and a quarter inches wide, roughly, give or take. So here's the heat sink that's in this unit right here. Here's the heat sink that's in this unit right here. Almost half, half the width. Let me set up a couple different things. I'll be back. That'll work. I was sitting here trying to figure out how I can light this to make it easier for you guys to see what's going on. If we look in here, we can easily see, looking at the top and the bottom piece, that we're missing over half the heat sink. It's just not present. There's this piece of phenolic here to try and channel the air out through the vent. But here's the other problem that we had present itself to us. When we Pull the phenolic out, let's match the holes up. It'd be like this. We match the holes up. We have a big opening, okay? It's really important that we think about this. That big opening is going to allow a great deal of air to come out at a much higher velocity than the air that's exiting from here. So we're going to have a high velocity air pressure and a lower velocity air pressure. Well, what happens when a high pressure is next to a low pressure? It's gonna displace even more air. Water and air share a lot of the same principles. Depending on how you're working with it, air is considered a water, a, ga a liquid, a gas, okay? Depending on how you're working at it, like temperature, pressure, speed variance, and all kinds of different things. So liquid water is a liquid all right air is air but they follow a lot of the same principles we all understand this so the principle that we're talking about today is that air will always take the path of least resistance okay this little hunk of heat sink that's in here has barely any air moving by it because most of the air that we've managed to jam into the cabinet whatever isn't bleeding back by the fan blades and back pressure because there's not enough space for the air to get out of the cabinet is blowing right out this hole and what little is left is passing over this little tiny heat sink okay so to help us illustrate this problem even further I have this here this is an old Carl built X-Force the same stock of heat sink set up so that they're directly in line with each other and I want you to see something the length of the heat sink and the width of the heat sink are vital. Okay, so we're utilizing the full vent space to occupy the heat sink. You see that? You see how that works? So the whole width of this heat sink is getting used. If we look at the edges of the heat sink here, they're wide open. So, yeah, we got a smaller fin count here for the most part. That, that doesn't concern me as much as this open space over here, this open space over here, and how it's so much shorter than what it should be. So we could sit down and we could do the math, and we could figure out how many cubic inches of surface area we're going to need to properly dissipate X amount of input watts of heat um, to be able to maintain with a certain velocity of air that is coming across the fins at a certain temperature. We could go over all of that and you guys' eyes would glass over until you, you friggin' decide you're gonna flip channels if I haven't lost you already. Or we can simply just look 
at the effects on the components. So let's do this just a quick minute. Let's do this real fast. Okay, so we're off the tripod finally, and we've got amp B and amp A, all right? If we can see, you can very clearly see the discoloring in the copper, all right? This amplifier is over 20 years old, and there's been no heat migration to the unit. This amplifier is in perfect working order. This is going to be coming up in another video. I need to modify the power wires for the customer. And there's a whole bunch of other little small details that we're going to do to this to help uh, more, I don't know, uh, tailor it to his needs. The reason this is important to pay attention to is we're going to look for our mounting screws for the heat sink. They're here. And they're here. And we're here. And we're here, and we're here. We come over and we look at the mounting screws for the heat sink in this amplifier. They're here, and they're here. This is the end of the heat sink. Right here, right at the edge of the discolorization. This is also the edge of the heat sink. Let that sink in for a minute. Edge of heat sink, edge of heat sink versus here and here all the way out to here. Now back in the day, if you called in like this, it was an 8-pill. If you notice, these two power leads are different from these two. See, this is different from this. These two are matched sections. Because everything was uniform and standard, that made it really easy for the guys to come in and say, oh, you want four more transistors? Turn it into a 12-pill? Blam! Here you go. You see the pill strips are cut. And you'd see that the lot numbers, these are the same lot numbers of transistors, and this is different. Okay. There is this extra piece. Now I want you to think about this, 8 and 8. So this extra 4 wasn't there. They still left the heat sink intact, which was good. That meant you get longer transmission time out of this. You wouldn't have quite the amount of heat saturation to the heat sink. You wouldn't have component failure from heat breakdown. There's a big, huge downward spiral of stuff that happens if you get the heat sink too small. Now the holes are drilled. That hole here is drilled. But we've cut over an inch and a half out over here and a whole inch out over here. So the heat sink's six inches wide and uh, we've lost over half of it in this box. So we've got 10 transistors in a 3 inch wide by 8 and a half inch long hunk of heatsink. I'm going to I'm going to illustrate this to you one more way. Okay, I had to dig around but I found the right way to illustrate this to you guys. This is an old piece of heatsink stock. And you can see that most of the transistors have been married right here on this portion on the board. So this is the standard width of heatsink that we all use, all of us use, which has been tried, true, and tested for years and years and years and years and years. <sighs> um, this heat sink's so gnarled up I'd never use it on anything. This actually came out of um, um, the amp that let the smoke out, the one where the guy had a couple fans quit, and the power wire was looped underneath the heat sink because it had never been zip tied together by the original manufacturer, and it shorted out on the heat sink and burnt the box to the ground. Yeah, that all happened right here. And if you guys remember, I had to replace the heat sink in that amplifier as well. So, the reason this is so important that I show this is not that I'm ragging on this, it's I have to explain to the customer why I need to now take his amplifier about 75% apart. This is all the heat sink that you're using for 10 transistors. And I mean that in all seriousness. I went ahead and measured out the dimensions of the heat sink that are present. And that's all that's underneath these transistors is this much heat sink versus this. When you get it back, you're going to have a heat sink that comes back to here on the board. So I have to go through all of this to explain the reason 
and I'm sorry this took so long, but I needed to walk you guys through mentally step by step. I can't just simply say, oh, bad, take apart. The heating on the board is a dead giveaway. It's cooking all the flux out of all the joints. Uh, it's just falling apart. And if I go and I put Toshiba's in this thing and make it just absolutely scream, I want to give the transistors at $75 or $80 a piece um, the best prayer for survival that I can possibly give them. So that's the reason I spent all the time talking about what we're going to do. Half the heat sink's missing in this particular amp. It makes me wonder, because I've never bothered to crawl underneath and look down in here on the last dozen or so that I've had that are in the same style and built since this has happened. Um, like I said, I got quite a few here and I'm afraid to go look at them. But that will be something that I will be addressing in the future. Every single one of them. Uh, it's just the burden of the job. So. On that note, that's how much heat sink is in this box. This little tiny strip, three inches wide. Where if we take and we buy this stock of heat sink to shave off this much from here to here, yeah, you can make an extra two pill out of that or whatever. Um, this is a $3 and 95 cent savings, and this is an additional $8 savings. So 12 bucks is what was saved in total material cost. So, okay, enough of this, let's move on. Okay. Well, we got most of the major components stripped out of here. I think I got one of the switchers is starting to go bad. It's, uh, I gotta load test each one of them and see which one of them is. It's making a funky noise. But uh, you got the whole back section unbolted. We're gonna utilize the front space up here to the front of the cabinet for us to slide the board forward. And then we're gonna tilt it up. So let's see here. There. That'll have to do. All right. Ta-da. That's it for 10 transistors. Yep. And it's got slots for 13. So we can see he's trimmed it here. And this is the edge of the heat sink stock over here. No, he trimmed it here too. Interesting. Hmm. Well, actual dimensions are 10 and a quarter by three and a half. So now what we have here is a 12-pill, actual straight 12-pill cabinet, board enclosure. Let's take a look at the heat sink here. Um, 14 inches long by 6 inches wide. So trim 2.5 inches off this side, and we trimmed a total of almost 5 inches off lengthwise. So next step is to uh, well dismount all the transistors and uh, dismount this piece of heat sink in here, this thing here. And take this thing off and figure out if we can get this to marry up to this board and the pill screws to be matched. So we're about two thirds now. We're not even halfway yet. Halfway is when we get the heat sink mounted up, but that's where we're at. And that's the reason that we're having this severe discoloring taking place over here. Everything is getting so hot because it can't cool itself. Yeah. Wow, that whole
hole is so close to the edge. Look at that. I mean, it's like right at the edge of the next pill hole. Okay, let's uh, let's continue on, but that's where we're at at the moment. Gentlemen in the YouTube land, we're doing a live feed right now on Facebook, so just showing this from the same point of view that everybody's watching on Facebook right now. I'm showing this to the YouTube fan club. Guys, don't forget to follow along on both social media outlets. I show stuff on Facebook sometimes that I don't show on the YouTube channel and vice versa. So now to the, the Facebook group of people that are watching. If you guys would have seen the very first video that I posted, uh, I think the day before yesterday, I could not believe what I found in here. And it's been thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly covered on a YouTube video. But we're going to go over it again here real quick, just in a minute. What we're doing is we've uh, had to completely break this amp apart. And... Uh, we're going to remove the heat sink, and I think once that I slide it out of here, you guys will understand why. So I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight to watch and follow along. Let's see here. Evening, Jamie. Hello, Mike. What's going on, guys? So right now what we're working on is dismounting the, the transistors from the heat sink which actually do most of the support for the heat sink. So we're down to our last four screws or so. Hope everybody's had a good day. Haven't had any mother nature over here today at all. Radio's been pretty quiet. I don't know about the rest of you guys. <laughs> what are you asking, Jamie? BBI, how about doing a video on combiners? I could. I totally could. Uh, my kit, my student there, uh, Scorpion, I think he did one here not too long ago, but I haven't checked to see if his videos are still up or not. Have not. So this is only half the battle. Once I get the heat sink out and changed, I gotta go in here and I gotta change all these transistors too. So we're gonna to put Toshiba's in here. Toshiba. Alright. Well, let's start down here first. Yay, we having fun here? <laughs> I'm not, I've been dreading doing this. Let's see if there's a, is there a third screw? There is, okay. So this board has holes for, or slots for 12 transistors in it. And what we have here is the heat sink and board combination for a straight 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the heat sink out of here and we're just going to lay it on here. This has 10 transistors in it and I want you guys to see the size difference in the heat sink. This is what everybody uses. All of us in the game, we use this size heat sink. And what's in here is going to shock you guys. Because roughly it's the same amount of heat that has to be dissipated. Right? Think about it for a minute. So. Je last two screws.
the last screw. We see the difference? This is what should be underneath the board. This is what was underneath the board. It's been trimmed on both sides. It's been trimmed here. It's also been trimmed here. Look at how much heat compound was used. So now the fun bit. getting this to marry to this board. Which I don't think I'm going to have that much of a hard time. But uh, 10 transistors on this one little hunk of heat sink, which its dimensional space is three and three fourths by 10 and a sixteenth. The whole board has changed colors throughout the pill run in the middle of the cabinet. The board is discolored from the heat. It couldn't get the heat away from the board. There wasn't enough heat sink surface. Hence the reason most of the parts overheated and broke down inside this box. And if we're going to put Toshiba's in here at $55 a piece from RF parts plus shipping, so it works out to be about $65 to $70 per component. I better do the customer justice and make sure he's got the right heat sink underneath it. Just saying. Shoot, I know it wasn't going to be this easy. Uh, in theory, this heat sink will work, but. Um, I'll have to completely re-drill this one. I've got this stock that's off of a 16 pill cabinet. Or 32, so there's 16 are designed to go on this thing. That I can custom cut and fab to fit to uh, fit the situation. I don't know. I'm kinda I'm kinda a little indecisive here. What do I want to do? So I kind of got this one dry fitted. Now, the other thing that we're fighting is the uh, the hole pattern, the, the stag pattern, the, the holes for the, heat, the transistors. Um, their spacing isn't, isn't standard. Um, actually closer together than what we're used to dealing with. So I can hit and be in a line for the first couple of these, but then by the time I get out here, the holes have migrated too far this direction. So. I think what we're going to have to do is, since I want this guy to have the best prayer for success, I'm going to use this heat sink, and I think we're probably going to end up having a row of transistors right through about here. If that makes sense. So, just trying a couple different things. Just to trying a couple different things. been so long since I had to do this. I'm having to dig around and find all this stuff to get this done. Got my tap o out for the first time in probably six months. 
Had to dig out a new bit. Had to change the gear ratio on the friggin' drill press. And couldn't find my polishing compound. It's okay. I'm good. So, what we've done is we've drilled to their pattern spacing for their transistors. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove beyond the shadow of anybody's doubt of a mine any kind of high spots associated with the surface area for the transistors. We are going to give this the best chance to survive into the future as possible. And several friends mentioned to me that I should just scrap everything in here and uh, completely rebuild it. And I'm like, well, I would do that. But I don't have the cabinet for it, one. And two, all I got to do is change the heat sink. It's a whole lot less work. That's all I got to do to make this better. I'm going to do it. It's that simple. So we're going to go ahead and we'll polish this up. Make it super smooth. Stupid, stupid, super smooth. I can hear you out there, Tech9. I know you're watching this video. Oh man, take 7 million grit sandpaper and just hit it and be done with it, BBI. I can hear him. I can hear him in my head. Now, we had to trim off um, a quarter of an inch at the end of the heat sink. And you do that for a reason. There's a lip that the air has to move over at the back of the cabinet. So if I was to put this flush up against the back of the cabinet, the air, the laminate airflow that's going to go down and go around, actually goes down this direction and out this way, the airflow would be limited to those three slots where if we give it a little, like a nice little quarter inch to a half inch of space for the air to recollimate, the air can tumble and there can be more movement of air pressure out the back of the cabinet. So. That's the reason that we had to put her on the old bandsaw and give her a wacky cut. All right. It's really stupid important that we get in here with the cleaning solution. Make sure we get all the compound, all the little chatter bits. Out of each one of the pill pockets, the screws. That's important. And that is why. So people wonder why the boxes that I built were so much more expensive, why they took so long to get. Because one guy that gives a damn can always build higher production than somebody that's out to do volume. Always. I was never into doing volume. I was into doing quality. Okay. We're at the halfway point. Let's get this thing mounted up.
So we got all the Chinesium parts out. That will work. All right, so this is what we're working on here now. We pan over here drilled polished and then we added the uh, phenolic board there so heat sink is cut and prepped now I want you to guys recognize there's literally double the amount of heat sink there between this surface area and that surface area I've doubled the footprint of the heat sink now the other thing that we can look at is the uh, opening in the fins here we're gonna have drastically increase the volume and the quantity of air that can pass through this thing. But before we can go and slap this thing back together, we've got one small thing that we have to address. Oh, um, I went in here and pulled all the transistors out, pulled all the 120s out, which I don't even know what those are. We'll measure those in a minute. The little blue caps he had in here. And over each one of the inputs, he had 220 puff capacitors, not 330. So I went ahead and removed those and put the appropriate established for 30 something years uh, value of component in the hole and uh, we got one other thing that we have to take care of we got to fix this wibble wobble got to fix this wibble wobble um, I want to cut the fins out of here I'm going to cut the fins out of here so this, the ones in the center are going to stay but I want to remove the fins here to maximize air velocity and because these are all stretched out I want to cut these out as well so Dremel time baby
Okay, now let's beat it with a hammer. Bust out the old R2D2A rigid vacuum cleaner there. I want to get all the filing dust out of it. The other thing we did is we went along and we cleaned all the heat sink fins out with a file. Make sure there's nothing that will ever break off and float free. Let's do ourselves a test fit. The other thing we did is we squared up the whole cabinet, had to bang on it quite a bit with a hammer, got all the edges back in square filed all the edges here so there's no rough burrs everything is square doesn't look hacked up and we put our phenolic blocker across the back this thing here so perfect absolutely perfect Put a little space for the air to be able to pick up velocity and recollimate. Got a nice, good, even seal here on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's put this thing back together. My teacher told me once twice and about 15 times don't get cocky don't be arrogant don't be disrespectful I always told myself if I ever was in a position where I would have a little bit of fame or be well known or be in the position where I was in charge and control overseeing anyone that I try to stay humble. The moral of the story that I'm telling you is my job is to fix the box to the best of my ability. That's it. When I first started, I had several people attempt to make videos that were belittling, disrespectful, or making fun of the box that I'd built and trying to point out the things that were wrong with it. Um, this isn't one of those videos, you guys. I am not in that business. This is a major player in this game. You take from this what you want. You guys have had to see about, oh, about a sixth of the amount of time that it's taken to get this done. And this is a major overhaul. I wish it could have just been a simple pill swap. I'm a little afraid that I'm going to have to do multiples of these. Because like I said, I've got multiples of these on the shelf that are all from the same era. That makes sense. I'm a little bit worried about it. So I use the tape as a gauge. We don't want to have anything more than this thickness, roughly, of a thermal compound. on a heat sink because if you use too much it acts as an insulator as we all know so now we know by doing it this way that we have a uniform amount of uh, thermal coat compound thermal transfer compound 
evenly across the heat sink surface. So we've got a uniform amount of goo, per se. See how well we did here. These three screws. Try again. Our spacing of our little air shield is off. So I think I'm going to change what we got going on here. If you don't think this shit isn't on there, oh. this is an epoxy based double sided stick tape. Let that go through one thermal cycle and this sucker would never have come off. Okay. This is silly. quite as graceful as I wanted, but it'll work. So, there we go, just like that. So now, this is spring-loaded and bolted down over here, so I can slide the heat sink back and forth any way I want, even though we're only going to have to do it one time. I don't have to worry about the alignment of that board anymore. Make assemblage of this a lot easier. Okay. Uh oh, shoot down. There we go. Okay.
So now you reach in with my finger. Reach in here with a screwdriver. I can guide that directly in. Now it's in place. That's a whole lot easier. Hmm, have to remember that for the future. Okay. Oh. So, the $60 million question. When you drop the screw, do you spend a half an hour looking for it, or do you just get another one off the shelf? I live in the world where we get another one off the shelf. screws to line up or heat sink screws it's gonna come out perfect I just have a feeling this is gonna come out pretty good Have this moment when you're building these things you're like yep yep this is all worth it I'm having that moment right now Dropsies, it is in the middle of the night though. Yeah, we're good. Made a piece of ICA heat sink, marry up to an X Force cabinet. Redrill all the board. This is a lot more work than what I quoted the guy on the phone. I seriously, I didn't think I was going to have to redrill 90% of the, redo the heat sink and spend all this time on the cabinet. I spent probably a good half hour, if not more, just getting the cabinet bent back straight. Okay. All the pill holes are. End up nice and square with the pockets. So on that note, yeah. I'm at that point where I've got to put the transistors in because I got to start doing work and I got to get in here and I don't want to have the chance of having any kind of schmoo getting down into the pill pocket. Well guys, the Toshiba transistor went up again today, and unfortunately that changes my quote. I don't know if it went up today, or if it went up last week, it's been a while since I bought any. But, uh, I mean it's been a hot minute since I bought any Toshibas, and uh, I had to cobble it together with match set of two and a match set of two and a match set of two and the remnants of a 16 pill bag that I had and uh, I thought well I want to 
replace as I'm doing this repair. So I went and I ordered some more. They're now only letting us have two per order. And the price is $140 for every two. So these are now up to $70 a wag. So after the, the shipping and so on, these are now $85 a piece devices. So I charge $85 a whack for these, right? And then only in the CB world does it go, well, I can go get them from RF parts cheaper now. Well, cool, go ahead, send them to me. I'll use your transistors. So, needless to say, End of an era is coming, guys. And those of us that have a large stock of these laying around, we're not too in a hurry to get rid of them. Pretty much everything I'm repairing nowadays, I put HGs in there. If it's uh, not having any problems with the HGs whatsoever, they are producing some funky harmonics. But we can get rid of that with just how we build the box. They've got a new lot in process of design that's pretty impressive. They're producing more power, but needless to say, we should think about that. These are $80 a piece. Again, I've already been here once, if you guys remember. You have to come back with the inch pound torque driver and lock these all down. I just wanted to get the pill pockets covered up. So I got to do a lot of flipping around. I got to reflow all of these. I got to change a bunch of stuff here. So I didn't want to have the chance of having a little piece of solder or a little piece of wire fall down on top of the, the heat sink. Cause us to have problems. But that is a match set, beta gain match too and a matched lot. This is gonna get to be pretty rare. I got a couple more boxes I gotta build. Um, that are old projects that I gotta finish. But I'm pretty sure once that happens, that's gonna be the end of the Toshiba for me. The ones I do have, the several hundred, or hundred that I do have in stock, I'm gonna keep for repairs. And I'm going to marry RF Parts' price limit in my replacement of components with their part as it goes up until they're out. And then the ones that I have on hand are going to get incredibly expensive, you guys. So, okay. Two driving eight. Toshiba transistors. Soak it in. I mean, soak it in good because I don't know when we're going to see this again. And just for the record, not a single pill screw was reused. All right, we'll be back. Well, let's give it a shot, Tess. Let's see if they like it. We're going to call this the eye in the sky point of view, you guys. Um, <clears throat> I spent most of my day running around doing other stuff for the other business. Jesus. And uh, as I was out running around, I was daydreaming. 94. How is that even close to 120? 
and uh, 106. What I'm doing is I'm testing. These are the little capacitors that he had sitting down there by the transistors. 101. And uh, I wanted to see what the values were. were. And the values of these are <laughs> 98. Oh. Um, anywho, so I had this idea why I was out running around today. 98. Way off. Like 30, 40 puff off. That I wanted to be able to provide you guys with a different perspective other than looking in at this angle or looking in at this angle because I can't work. I can't, my hands can't be in here. So, 99, I thought, well, so I got all this stuff directly above my workspace. I got wire and I got 102. <laughs> all this wire and I got all these lights and I thought, well, so I had to go build a build them out 98 in the process of building them out I actually took the uh, the tripod mount off the bottom of my camcorder which has been on there for well three years now since I bought it and I found the whole bottom end of my camera starting to crack out so needless to say I gotta go over to, back over to the production side of the business and beg and plead and say hey I like to buy a new camera again. This is why the mount I'm using is flipping, ripping out of the bottom of the camera. So it's up there. It's hanging in free space. There's a uh, good four feet up, three foot up now at the moment. But <clears throat> back on task. I mean, I'm gonna have to beg and I'm gonna have to plead. Please, Mr. Black Productions, can you help a starving young amp builder out? He'll laugh at me. Just know it. Um. These are the 120s that read 119. Like three trays of these, because when they come in, I sit here for hours and I just. I get the one percenters, but one percent means 119, 120, 121, 122, somewhere in there. So I separate them all out so they're all individually matched. That way, when I go to actually grab them out of a drawer, I don't have to sit there and go through two dozen of them to get five that are the same. I've. You know, I'm going to start grabbing and cutting leads and get on with the show. So, we've had to replace almost every single cap around the transistors at this point. So, let's see, I'm going to need 10 of these, right? One, two, oh yeah, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now look at that, I'm over here working, I'm not even in frame. You guys are just going to have to bear with me, it's going to take a few minutes to get all this figured out. How it works. So I got a big tray of these, and they're separated out. Now I went through and I did a bulk buy, I bought like 10,000 of each one of the caps that I needed. I got myself worked into a position where I was down to like 5 120s and 10 330s, and I thought, well, I don't want to be in this position again. So how do we overcome that? It's real simple. Buy in bulk. So I bought bulk, and I mean bulk. <sighs> While we're at it, all right, let's double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's grab the expensive caps. One, two, three, four, and five. We have the three thirty one percenters here. These little metal clads are not cheap, but it's not about the cost. It's about the quality of the device, right? Trust me, I went out there and looked, just like every other starving ant builder on the face of the planet. 
we went out there and we looked and uh, Russia makes some good parts they do but uh, China does not make the good part as far as this is concerned at least uh, what is not commercially available to us over here in a Western world per se but we did figure out where these are made we did but I like my friend Tony and it's a fair price That's five. Okay. Well, let me uh, start slamming some parts in this thing. And the camera's blinking at me, says I gotta get rid of some of this video onto the computer. So, let me do that, and I shall return. Okay, so we got all the caps in. Now we are gonna test these 150 supposedly KVA cap, the supposedly 151 at 6 kV hundred and forty six hundred and forty six here so that one that one's within acceptable spec but I would not give it a prayer of lasting so let's go ahead and get down in here real quick I'm going to unsolder this. Central Park and Fall, 143-144. I am not reusing these caps, though. There's too much juice that goes by them for me to feel comfortable with that. I'd sure hate to see this guy, this poor guy, go through all the hassle of getting this all put together and then have one $3 capacitor Make it so he can't use his equipment. I'd... These blue China schmoo caps, man. Alibaba Express. That one just broke. Throw it in the effort bucket. Okay. Got off the phone with a very nice gentleman, just bought himself a 3000 and he was having a hard time trying to understand how to read his bird meter. So he said he bought himself a 5000 watt slug and he goes, man, that thing's only doing about a thousand watts. And I was like, what? He goes, well, the needle runs over to the corner, but that's a thousand watts, right? And I said, no, bud. So we're looking at that middle gauge, the middle, the middle marker, you know, you get that, the the top marker it's 0 through 25 and then the middle one that's 0 through 50 and then 0 through 100 he's like really I'm like yes I said, so if you think about it we're looking at that middle gauge and then we're gonna add a couple zeros so, oh 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 okay it's like he could hear the light bulb clicking in in his head I freaking love doing that stuff I love being able to teach things to people like that I love I love that and doing it in a non uh, disrespectful way, just helping people learn. I love that. Absolutely love that. So let's go over here. 
grab some better capacitors. We'll throw those in. We get 150 over here. And the output of the two-pill driver section. Had a nice conversation with the guy today that owns this amplifier. Yes, I did. Super nice guy. He just wants to have his stuff fixed. It's like, man, you're probably to go in reverse on this deal. He's like, I don't care. I just want it to run. So I want it to run. I don't want to have to worry about it no more. It's okay. Come to find out, I had to verify this, but I had a feeling about it. He talks sideband. So this thing is not set up for sideband at all. It's totally biased class C. Okay, so if you run this thing in sideband, you're going to end up damaging the transistors. Class C operation, 100% reference to ground on the input transformers. So, if you're verifying this thing runs, we're going to go through and we're going to add some pimp juice to it. Just a little bit of pimp, a little bit of flavor. We're going to add some LEDs to it and we're going to add some underlighting and some few other cool little things this guy wanted to have done. That uh, He ordered apparently originally with the amplifier, it just never got installed I guess. So we're going to give it to him. We're going to let him have it. First things first, let's get it running. Um, the other thing is, is the power supplies on this thing are cranked up to 22 volts, which is a little bit hot. Ah, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, yet one more thing I've got to, I got to figure out and fix. I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here. See, so he's got. Inside he goes in and he cuts one resistor, which is the reference voltage. And then he slaves them all together and he brings them out here. And then I think this resistor here is how I set my voltage. Pretty sure. Taking into account, I've taken this all the way apart and studied this circuit pretty heavily. I'm pretty sure that I can put like a 1 or a 2K v, two, uh, 2K resistor here variable. And I can adjust my voltage. But I'll get that figured out here later. I want to get the, uh, the high voltage section of this thing squared away. Or not high voltage, the pff, high voltage. Yes, the high voltage for my plate transformer. No, I want to get the power distribution installed. And uh, got all of our caps replaced now. We have all brand new 330s, all brand new 120 puffs, and all brand new uh, metal clads. So get this squared away, get the power distribution squared away. And then we're going to go in here and we are going to uh, start doing all the peripherals. So I got to add all the resistors too. So as I make those parts up, I'm not going to make you guys sleep through that. I shall return. Mm -hmm. Ah, you toy your dress. Oh, what a mess. You're such a slut. I confess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Input, output. Input, output. Splitter, combine. Okay. I just bought a lot of 500 of these for ten dollars. 100 volt disc capacitors. Same thing I've been using now for eight, nine years.
I paid what ten dollars for a lot of 500 of these so yeah couldn't help but notice the, uh, the 25 volt caps that were in here were seven dollars for a lot of 500 it's interesting to me oh well it's not starting now
fun, right? <clears throat> yeah, fun. Fun, isn't it? It's tiring. It's a long day, and I'm still out here working. Wish you guys really understood how much time this, this takes to, to build at this level. We're not going to talk about the hours and hours of off camera back screen prep that I got to do where it's like you're measuring components all day and just a lot. There's a lot to this. I'm starting to feel it. I'm gonna want to get this. I'm gonna get this done to where I can run it. Okay. Capacitors all done. Transistors all done. Heat sink completely replaced. Power wires completely upgraded. Every single cap changed. Every single cap checked. Oh. I gotta look at my inputs. And then I gotta do the output. throw the, the switch I need to make sure to adjust my voltage down a little bit sideband upgrades I gotta change these chokes out. I have to rewrap them, got them. Do a do.
Okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Let's check our input capacitors. Okay. So that is 13.49. Let's trim this up. 14.79 Trim it up for 15 flat I think I'm ready, let's run it It is uh, 12 o'clock. Love this tool. One of the few tools I have for my dear old dad. Yep. He's an aircraft mechanic. for this tool. He got it for me, I think, for my birthday one of the diodes. Sons of a diddly. Alright. Five. Getting tired, but I'm on the home stretch. Put bias in this thing. And then I got to uh I'm gonna add an under light kit to it and then an interior light kit. This guy wants a little bit of flash for his pizzazz. And we're done. Let's run a home stretch of this, you guys. Been a long haul on this X Force. Normally they're just transistor swaps and power wire upgrades and top side stuff. I'm just getting tired of looking at the same box. This is pretty much I pretty much built this whole box up from scratch except for the power supplies, so yeah, is what it is. Tis the job, the J-O-B. So the diode represents the load in a circuit. Okay, otherwise the coupling device to ground. So that determines how much uh, how much voltage is weeped onto the uh, input transformer. And you can use one diode, and one sandstone, and with enough isolation chokes you can split it off like a messenger. It's not the way I like to work. Not the design that I feel comfortable with. It's like in a messenger you'll see over by the keying circuit. This is the back of the amplifier, this is the front of the amplifier. Then over here you got your LED board and then in the center you got your high, medium, and low knob and stuff. You'll see over here in the front you'll see two load resistors that go and then another one that goes this direction. The one that goes this direction is the one that runs the, uh, the driver section. And the other two are split load cells that split the, the load for that circuit going off to each one of the inputs for the transformers but it's only got one diode and depending on what that diode is you can wildly variate the voltage but anything about half a volt you are flirting with failure hard so
Okay, boys and girls. Let's see here. Bias is in. Hello, 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 hello. Let's engage the sideband delay. Hello, audio. Negative. Need a bigger capacitor for the delay. God, what else isn't right with this thing? Okay, um, I think we're getting close to the tail end of this though. Right, let me change this uh, delay cap, which is right back here, by the way. All right. Hello. Beautiful. A little bit of a delay. That's all we're looking for. So when this thing's on sideband, the relay's not going to chatter. It's going to stay click, click. Oh, Roger, right on, man. Click. Two four zero. Click. That's what we're looking for. Done with this bit. All right. So now for the fun part. Actual functionality is correct. Now. So, take the uh, camera off the eye of God position. And let's get back to normal operation with that and um, start playing with some other stuff. Yeah. Gentle hairs and fine women. Let's do this. So, what we got here is a thousand watt slug in 2x position. So, fully deflected to the right is 2,000 watts. Over here we have a thousand watt slug on average, five watt slug in reverse from the back from the bird ten thousand watt dummy load. We're gonna use a twenty nine fifty, five watt slug between the twenty nine fifty. And of course this completely rebuilt, and I mean completely rebuilt, two by eight. Let's see here. Let's do drive real quick. About twenty hole flipping watts. So this is your power breaker. And this is your on-off switch. Kind of counterintuitive. I don't know why they wired it like this, but we're in the low position. Perfect input tune now. Let's put it up in the high position. Another couple hundred watts. One one one. Two 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 three. Hello. It's working just the way it should. We got the voltage set up right. Yay! Done. Praise God. Okay. So, the next step is to add all the flash to it. Yay! Flash! Ah! Uh, well, let's, uh... Let's power it down and give everything a minute to discharge. And when we come back, we're going to have the tin on it. And uh, we're going to go over it from there. So, I fixed the fixed voltage problem. There was a resistor that went from here to here. I was a 1.7K. Yes, master. Right. Teacher's up late. 1.7K, and of course I put a little bit of a variable can on there and dialed it down from 22 volts down to something that was safe. Uh, we're set at 15 flat now. Completely ripped the board out, changed the heatsink out, um, completely updated the positive system, retuned it, changed everything every single capacitor inside this duck pucker. We added bias to it, um, put 10 Toshibas in here, 2879, matched set, matched lot, matched gain. Give it every upgrade and every possible chance of possible survival. So, now that we know that, now that we know that, everything is good. The world is restored balance. We beat the corners back in so they're square this corner, this corner, and that corner back there. Let's get the lid out. Let's get it fixed up. I gotta add some LEDs to it. 
And when we come back, we'll hook the derail radio up to it. We're going to show it doing its max bird power, max peak power, and we'll give it a shot. We'll see what it looks like on the spec end. So should be relatively clean being that it's biased. Everything around it is clean now. It's got all the right value components. The circuit should be relatively harmonic free. So, oh, I'm not going to test all of these. As you can see, they were falling apart from being so hot. The lids were cooked off, I had legs popping out. Um, I'm feeling this, a couple of these are bad, but then a couple of them we can't test because they just broke down when we took them apart. It's the problem when you cook the transistors because you got them on a one inch piece of heat sink. Okay, we shall return. Okay. came apart during disassembly came apart during disassembly let's check out this little guy here In a 22. I can already tell you what happened. Got too hot. One of the caps broke down. This thing fell out of resonance. Either that or the power supplies went squirrely on it, but. Oh, 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 oh. Junk. We have a bad pill, boys and girls. All right. Doesn't matter, the heat ate it. That's what caused our failures here. 26. Getting a little curious on how long this video is going to be. 23. So we've got equal depletion and gain structure. Hmm. So one of the things I look for is uh, <clears throat> uniformal collapse. <coughs> and what I mean by that is the pills will come apart at about the same rate because they're all exposed to the same conditions kind of uniformly. So. God, these things are sticky. Too much heat sink compound. See what I'm saying? They're all going towards the grave at the same rate. But it was a good call on the customer's part to stop running it. Thirty-four. Those two are together. Okay, well now I gotta wipe the pound of heat sink compound off my fingers. Get this cleaned up, we're gonna shoot the wrap for this. Okay, so we put an internal LED kit in this thing. There's three independent rows of LEDs. Please note they're all evenly glowing the same. Now the amplifier is off. We just turned the breaker on. Check that out. So we also put an underlight kit on it too. And I do believe green is your favorite color, my friend. That's exactly what you got. Green. As green gets. Underlight kit off. Amplifier off. Breaker off. Now, the good thing about having these two separated is you can leave that on and let the box cool down. 
They're very soft, subtle, quiet fans that move enough air. They do. And now that we've opened up that heat sink in the back and we've let it so air can go in and actually go out of the box and have something to go around other than a little stick, I think we're going to be in good shape. All right, guys, let's turn the lights back on. Let's get this done with. Okay, here we go, guys. The actual test bit. 1,000 watt slug and peak, 1,000 and average, 5 watt slug in reverse. DRL Wolfman 29, 5 watt slug between the DRL Wolfman 29 and the TX800. Amp is in on, high, and standby at the moment. Hello, audio. Hello, audio. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, audio. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, one, two. Two. All right, so now we got our spectral shots out of the way. Quit beating up the front end of my spectrum analyzer here. Whew. This thing makes stupid power. Here's the peak meter. Watch this. Oh, 2000 peak. Here's our average number. Watch this. And that's from a 500 watt dead carrier. No low dead key swinging Ford bullshit here. Guys, this has been a time-consuming challenge. But I honestly feel that my friend here that sent me this piece of equipment is going to have a much better life with this amplifier. Now, there are a couple things that we have to do. Now, hold on one second. We'll be right back. All we had to do was go in, replace all of these, change out this, and replace all of this. And brother, now you get this. Gentlemen, I gotta go. I've got other people I gotta make happy and other people I gotta fix and take care of. Mr. E, I appreciate you sending this up and giving me the opportunity to go through it and make it right for you. It literally has every part in it money can buy that is good for the most part. Um, we could have changed it out to power supplies, but that would have made this thing completely unrealistically expensive. And, um, I think you're going to have a good shot of this thing holding together the way it sits. It's not bolted, it's set at 15 volts flat. And with the right radio, it'll make 1200 bird. Not no 800, but 1200. 2000 watts plus peak power. I got nothing else to say. Guys, I appreciate you all tuning in to check out this video. I know it's going to get a ton of views, it's going to get shared a lot. Um, as always, I don't have anything negative to say about anybody because that's not the business that I'm in. My job is just to fix the amplifier. I'm going to probably hang that on a wall someplace. Good night, guys. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. 
this is what we do. We fix repair, and when we feel like it, we build some of the best hand-built amplifiers on earth bar none, hands down. I think everybody cannot disagree with that anymore. It's a fact. I'll see you guys. Have a good night. Have a good day. Till the next one. Which will probably be later today, since it is 2 o'clock in the morning and I've only got 3 hours of editing ahead of me. You guys enjoy your weekend. I'll see you.